Yo guys, welcome back to the Straight Talk Podcast. Welcome back guys. This is part two to the Piers Morgan reaction. But first of all, thank you Dragon Lord, coined Steve Fraser. Can't get over that, that name. Uh, you're a legend. This is their third super chat he sent us bro. The third super chat. Listen, and when these super chats keep coming in, they keep flooding in, Dragon Lord... We'll remember you. And you'll, you'll be at the top of the Dragon list. Dragon Lord has said, this is for you not to get your moves out, bro. Because yeah. you said on the video that you would get your moves out for money. So, there you go. There yeah. we have it. Uh, this is a very, very good... Uh, it's, a, it's a good debate, isn't it? Yeah. So, let's carry on. We're going to get into a few more topics on it. So, I heard a bit about abortion. Yep. Uh, a couple other things. So, yeah. Let's right now, Piers is wanting a straight month. Once he's getting upset month. about not having yeah. it. It's that's a straight jacket. Good. That's, 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 that's how you were born. Anybody spoke up. That's how you were born. Middle-aged straight white guys like me. Do we need you? Because you're the you're the patriarchy, Piers. We Stop are. This no, we're not. We are. We are, we are actually the minority now. We're the minority group. Right. In this well, I'm finally. Uh, finally. Let me move on. Let me move on. I want to start with you, uh, if I may, Officer Tatum, on this. Is celebrity Trump derangement syndrome back? Kamala Harris. Two clips. Joe Biden on Howard Stern. Kamala Harris on Drew Barrymore. Which is one of the most revolting things I think I've ever watched on global television in the history of television. Let's take a look at Kamala Harris, Vice President of the United States, on Drew Barrymore's show. That says a lot. I've been thinking that we really yeah. all need a tremendous yeah. hug in the world right now. Yeah. But in our country, we need you to be Mamala of the country. Shut the hell up. Stick to acting, Drew oh, Barrymore. Geez. Stick to doing your acting shit with Adam Sandler and all that kind of stuff. I've been thinking that everybody in the world needs a big hug right now. <laughs> how more, how, I just, how <laughs> pathetic can you get, bro? Do you know this what I mean? Is, this, she's reminding me of Greta Thunberg at this moment in time. This, this is ridiculous. It's all an act. You're all acting for your show. Bullshit. Honestly, it, it just, I just want to be so more explicit than this, but I'm really holding my tongue at the moment. You chat crap. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, let me bring it over to Tatum. Have you ever felt more nauseous watching television than in the Marmala moment? No, I mean, these people are absolutely ridiculous. I want to say another word, but I'm trying to be a good Christian. But, you know, this, this woman, they, they're all fake. They're all fake. Kamala Harris is now the first black vice president. When she was, you know, uh, elected into the Senate, she was the first Indian senator. I mean, these people are absolutely ridiculous. What does Mamala mean? Is that going to help with inflation? Is that going to help bring down prices of groceries? None of that matters. Are they going to secure the border? None of what she's doing on the couch with this other lady, Barry Moore. I mean, they got a big old couch. Why are they sitting right in front of each other? Mm. These people are absolutely ridiculous and virtue signaling. Well, it's not it, it literally fault. It, she didn't my, ask to be called that, right? She just said that her stepchildren call her that. And then Drew was well, like... Well, there's two, two, ignorant, two ignorant folks just saying rubbish. Neither, none of that really matters to the American people. I don't know why they're even having a conversation about it. What, I found, what I found it fascinating, though, is you it's only see on American... Honestly, well, well, hang on, Blair, I'm going to come to you. In American television, now, it's very, as you get into election year, actually any year with, with Trump, you would never see this in reference to Trump or Melania or his vice president, or his vice president's wife, or any of that. We don't seem... They are, they are oh, all absolutely. the devils, right? The only people that you can talk this way about. And it was interesting to me, because Howard Stern is one of the people I most admire in world media. <laughs> and has, he's one of the greatest interviewers in history, and I love the guy. But I was actually quite surprised about just how softball he was with Joe Biden last week. Let's take a look. You know, the reason I'm so excited to talk to you was because I wanted to understand the tragedy in your life and how you dealt with it. And you're the kind of leader I love because we're lucky to have you in the Oval Office and serving as the father of the country because if you're a good father to your family, which you are, I know you'd be a good father to the country. And I, and I want to thank you for providing a calming influence, an organized administration post-COVID, getting that vaccine out. I remember what the world was like at that point, getting NATO, getting us to feel comfortable, standing up to Putin, the incredible large growth in the jobs, unemployment rate Rick down, Tilly and Rob, I'll give you your greatest hits. The lowest uninsured rate in history, four out of five Americans are covered for less than $10 a month. Knocking off a few ISIS leaders, cutting the emissions in half. I mean, you've always been an environmentalist. 
I mean, it went on and on. Uh, Blair, I mean, I was surprised yes. at how it, how it went quite so far in the sycophancy route with Biden. Were you? It's not mm. surprising at all. There's this really sick thing that happens in American media where if you are a celebrity or a host or an interview, you have to absolutely worship to the point of insanity any Democrat politician on the show. And every Republican politician, we're talking from, you know, Congress to president to anyone, is literally Hitler. And this is something I've observed my whole life. George Bush was literally Hitler. John McCain was literally Hitler. Mitt Romney. And now Trump. And now they want you to believe that, actually, no, this is really literally Hitler this time with Trump. But it's the same thing with the Kamala thing. And Kamala's legacy is particularly sad to me. I mean, it was spoken very plainly by the Biden administration that she was literally uh, picked because she was a black woman. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's just actually really embarrassing and hurtful towards black women and minorities in this country who want to believe that they can prosper on their own merit rather than be handpicked out of something. So I've never understood the, the love for uh, Miss Kamala. Well, it also, it just looks so partisan. I mean, I spoke to Charlemagne the God in yeah. New York uh, recently, and he's gone completely off the Biden administration because he thinks Carmen has been so useless for African Americans and got done absolutely nothing to uh, improve their lives. Trump was better. Yeah, yeah, I think that's why he's getting a lot more vote now for uh, in the polls. For I mean, we don't know much about politics. We don't know much about uh, politics in America, but... Trump. I know I'm voting for Trump if I had the choice, Trump. Yeah, but why? Because he's the goat, man. <laughs> You're just voting for him because you like, like the way Trump, that he... I'm going to stop payroll tax, bro. Trump is, is a beast, man. Oh, bro, it, I, it were way better than Biden, the reptilian. Yeah, but we don't, we don't know that. because <laughs> we, we don't know that because we don't actually even understand American politics one bit. Yeah, but get Donald J. Trump. Yeah, what, what we should say, yeah, but just say the reason why you want him in because from what you've seen. No, Jay Trump the goat, bro. Come on now. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be honest. From what I've seen and from what I know, which is absolutely nothing about President Trump and President Biden, all I know is who I like watching more on TV. Who? And that's who I'm going to... That's who I would Who's pick. That? Trump. Exactly. But Trump's I'm not goat, picking bro. Trump because of his policies because I don't know about Are his you policies. You're Biden? like, I'm picking Trump because of his Joe, policies. Joe, Joe you don't even know not about Trump's policies. We're British. How, how the hell can you tell me what about, about Trump's about policies? Joe Biden, bro, just sits like... Yeah, but it's the guy... His reptilian eyes like... Listen, you've seen him when they drink water, like... They are both very entertaining, right? They yeah, are bro. both very entertaining, but... Trump just for goat. me, for entertainment purpose wise, I want to see Trump back in office again because obviously I, I, we do know that Biden is losing his mind a little bit, and he's rightly so. The guy's in his eighties and he's trying to run America. Rept- like you tell me, bro. another eighty-year-old that can do that shit? No he's one. Reptilian, bro. I'm telling you, lizard, lizard people. Maybe so. Trump back on. You can see it when they drink water, when the tongues split into two, and that. <clears throat> African African Americans, um, Esther. Let me ask you, there's also a, t- a time interview with Trump. They had two long interviews with him, done a big cover story in which he lays out what he may do mm. if he comes uh, back to the Oval Office. And it's gone down with the Democrats like a lead balloon, obviously. Um, amongst many things, he said he used the military to sort out the southern border, uh, National Guard, if necessary, migrant detention camps possible, suggests a 60% plus tariff on Chinese imports. Well, listen... I, I think those what Piers Morgan's just said, from what I know, is, is actually quite good. As if you wouldn't use the army to stop the immigrants from coming from Mexico. They're coming over in freaking thousands and thousands and thousands. Yeah. Travelling yeah. through Texas, do you it's know what I mean? Just, it's not just uh, a couple hundred. Every, no, it's not. Every couple of months. As if you wouldn't tax China more as well. They are the enemy. Um, says uh, Israel, um, they should be... Uh, Changing their public relations is fared very badly. It says abortion is a state's rights issue. Talking about access to abortion pills, we'll have an option, opinion on that. I'm not going to explain, I'm not going to say it. I have pretty strong views, but he won't say them. Uh, he would absolutely consider pardoning January 6th defendants, uh, uh, even those who've obviously been sent to prison. Uh, NATO Europeans need to pay their share, uh, and so on. So uh, a lot there of very Trumpian stuff. What's your take on this time interview? I think he said a lot of things that would resonate with people that have basically been left with no other option than Mm. to vote for Trump. I think the Democrats' reaction to Trump baffles me because he is their fault. Everything that he is, 
is their fault. Because if you offered people an alternative, Trump wouldn't even be someone who is taken seriously. He's not, you know, clothed in, in, in glory. Um, but one thing that does concern me about Trump that I think we need to look under the hood a little bit is who's going to be in his administration. Because being a politician isn't just about convincing people to vote for you. It's also yeah. about being a leader and being able to bring people under your roof and actually get them to work together to have a coherent administration. He's alienated a lot of people that have been consistently by his side for years. And that's the thing that concerns me. I think a lot of the things that he says is quite common sense, leaving abortion to the states, you know, securing the southern border, all of these things that the Biden administra administration could just say they want to do, but will not do it because they've been effectively hijacked by lunatics that I, I genuinely believe hate America. OK, well, James, you are our resident political expert in America I after am. last <laughs> week. So your take on, uh, on <laughs> Trump derangement syndrome, we're probably about to hear an example of it, but... Um, your view of his manifesto <laughs> because we're elected. I, honestly, I think it's terrifying. That interview is, is scary in many ways. I think the thing that stood out for me the most was the stuff about tracking pregnant women and allowing states with anti-abortion bans to track women's pregnancies. And it's not surprising from someone that said you can grab women by the pussy to now want to track women's literal pussies. But I do think that's a bit of a problem. Should make, and we should a, make a track. Grab her by the pussy. <laughs> grab her, grab her, grab her. You know, like a, mm. a dance track or something. It's very scary, and I agree with Esther. It, it's it's surprising that he wants to just rule the world and doesn't care about what other people Do think. Do you know what's interesting about the whole abortion <laughs> thing? Because Trump has made... All right, guys, that uh, rounds this one off because we're going into... Abortion is bad. Abortion is murder. I did completely disagree with abortion. <sighs> just for reference. I'm not even going to get into that because it's the end of the video. So, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Like and subscribe to the channel. We need your support. Don't forget, hit that notification bell as well so when we bring out new content, you can get notified. See you next time. See you later. Did you just flex? No, I was stretching. This guy. See you later.